All right, everything looks good. Now this video or this section of the video is going to be a little bit longer because I wanted to cover really a lot of stuff in this one. So our action plan is ready. All we need to do is now understand that how we can actually, uh, first of all, the encryption is one of the challenge in front of us. And eventually one of the challenge will come up is we want to send this token into the user's cookie. So let's see how we can do that. The first one uh, is really easy. You can just use a, ch uh, use a package like a bcrypt. And we want to use bcrypt.js, not the bcrypt, although that also works, but this is an easier implementation, much more abstract form of how we can do things. And this is what I want, so please search it for me. And bcrypt.js, a really popular one uh, in the community of JavaScript developers. You can see the weekly downloads, a lot of people use it. So this is really uh, easy one of it. Uh, yes, you can use inbuilt crypto module as well, but this one is better. It has a lot more layers to go on further uh, so that we can have better encryption going on. So it's inbuilt crypto module randomly by it. So all these details you can study. I'll not go much into this one. This is how you go ahead and use this one. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy this and love it. Absolutely love it. I can do all in the browser. Don't even have to open anything else. Uh, so yes, please allow pasting of this one. So that's the part one of it that what we need. And another part that we need, I really need to learn the shortcut of how to move into the tabs because Previously, the alt tab was to between switching the application. Now everything is happening in the browser. I need to learn about how to move between the tabs before and after. All right. So the next one is actually cookie parser. So we have a really popular package for this one. Cookie dash parser, the second one. I don't know why the search is giving me all the second ones. But this is the one that we need, cookie parser. Again, a really smart package acts as a middleware. You might have noticed that. And once you install that, it allows you to actually access your cookie. Just like when you see request, request if you try to console log that, it's a big object which allows a lot of requests to come up from the user. Maybe request.params, that means all data that comes from the URL. Or maybe request.body or request.json, not json, request.body. Similarly, we can also have a request.cookies just after adding this one. So this is a fantastic package. This is how you inject it and this is how you use it. App.use, cookie parser and that's all. So let's go ahead and add this one. So we'll just say, hey, bcrypt.js as you're installing this one. So go ahead and install cookie parser. Copying pasting is always a good idea in this case so that we don't have the uh, mistyping in the packages. Also, I have committed the last changes as well, by the way. So let's see package.json and we have uh, these JSON web token, uh, cookie parser and bcrypt.js. So these two are already with us. Let's go ahead and see how we can do that. Okay, first and foremost, how to get all data. All of your data is stored into either request.body, uh, but there could be request.params as well, in case it is coming up from the URL, uh, which is another subject in itself. But right now we know that everything is coming up from request.body, which is an object, not an ordinary object, a gigantic one, and what all data you want to expect from the user to come up. So you can go ahead and destructure that directly and can have this one. We are defining that we want to have a first name, a last name, email, uh, password is all what is going to come up. Now, so far, this has nothing to do with the user uh, model that we have created because this is just something that is coming up from the front end. So my first job is done, get all the data from the body, all right? All the data should exist. Now, this is where the validation checks actually comes up. So I wanna check whether all the users are there. So I'll just say that, hey, if there is uh, email, uh, let's start one by one. Don't want to just skip the order, otherwise it's a bad practice. First name, last name, email, and password. Password. So all of this data is there, so just want to have this one. So if all of this data is present, then do something. So I'll just go ahead and replace it with the or sign. So this means if first name is there, uh, or uh, we might have the last name as well, so we'll just go ahead and say or uh, first name or last name, email or password. So if all of them are there, then do something. So all these, and you can go ahead and proceed with and as well. I'll leave this as a simple assignment that which one you want to proceed. Uh, you may want to go that, hey, uh, now again, remember this, understand this very carefully. If first name is present, or there is a last name present, or there is an email, or there's a password, I want to proceed if any one of them is present. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments, which one is a perfect, is an and operator or an or operator? Yeah, that's a tricky question. <laughs> all right, so uh, just go ahead and replace them with all because we want to check all of them should be present. So there we go. We go ahead and say, hey, this one should be and. 
So there we go. Now we are checking for all the values, first name, last name, email, and password, all of them are present, then move forward. But the easier check would be that if I go ahead and select all of this and wrap them up inside a parenthesis and put up an or statement, the negation sign. So now this condition is checking if, first it was checking if all of them are present, now it is checking if all of them are not present. Even if one of them is missing, then it's going to create and jump into the line number 19 of the structure of the code. Uh, really simple, all you want to do is, in this case, we want to send a response. So we'll just say uh, res.send and we want to send a status first. So let's go ahead and send a status. Status codes are really important. Maybe we'll have a separate video on that. There is a code in case you want to uh, study about them. There is a nice, very clear cut documentation about this, which is a status code and uh, MDN actually uh, shows it very nicely, very precisely uh, that, hey, here are all these informational code. So in case maybe you want to have a redirectional message used between 300 to 399, server errors, 500 to all of this. Client side response means client has sent less data, not so accurate data than use a response between them. Again, which one to use 400 or 450 or 451, that's your internal matter of your organization. Uh, just make anything as a standard throughout the organization and uh, that's that will work. So we'll just say 400 because client is sending the less data and then we'll be just sending a response. Uh, response could be in the JSON format. Again, depends on what your organization is making a standard that, hey, we always send the response in the text format or maybe JSON format. We do it JSON basically. I'll show you later on how we can do it in the JSON. But right now we'll be just saying that all fields are compulsory. Again, you can write better messages than this one. Okay, if this is all done and all good, then obviously we need to check if user already exists. Now, here is the most important part. You can only check if the user exists or not uh, through the mongoose because mongoose has the ability. So we are already creating this user up here. We have already exported that user. So why not to bring this into our app.js and use everything from this guy because it has the access of it. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, we are going to just uh, grab the user. Uh, so we'll just say, hey, user, feel free to call it anything, whatever you like. And that will be coming up from uh, require. And let's grab it from one directory back. Mm, nope. We need to go into the current directory and inside the model. Then we have just one file, which is user. So now I have access to this user. And if you remember, user was an object uh, like this is this entire export statement, this mongoose. This user is created from mongoose. So mongoose is your database ODM, means it can query to the database. It has access to this one. So my job of check if user already exists can be simplified, can be simplified a lot. How we can do that? We can actually make a query to this one. Again, I told you, hey, whenever you make a database query, always assume your database is in some another continent. So always, always go ahead and use await in front of all database calls. It takes some time. Okay, then we have access to this user and user can actually go ahead and query. So there are a lot of query statements that you can learn through Mongoose. The one which we are using is find one. Uh, there could be find by ID and all of that. Right now I'm looking forward to find one. Based on what? I want to check if user already exists or not and this should be based on email. So let's go ahead and this is how you query, uh, like you write your where clause, not accurate statement, but where clause. So I want to search based on email. Now, one thing you need to be absolutely clear since I'm writing an email here, this email refers to this email, which I got from request.body. Now, if this is true, then we should hold this into a variable. So let's go ahead and call this one as existing user and let's go ahead and hold this. Now, once we hold this, then we have to check if the user already exists or not. So if user exists, that means we cannot move forward. The user is already registered. So let's go ahead and do a simple if statement. If there is existing, suggest me, please. Yep, existing user, then we don't want to proceed. And maybe we can borrow a code, a piece of code here. Or maybe we can write a method uh, to simplify it. Consider this as an assignment. So whenever you send a response, there could be a generalized method where you just send the response code as well as whatever the data you want to send as a JSON or something. So we'll send a 400 response, uh, 401, maybe whatever your organization is making a standard. So all fields are compulsory. Instead of that, we will say that a user already exists with this email. So whatever makes sense, you can go ahead and work on with that. All right, there we go. We can remove this one. 
All right, so we have now proceeded on to this part that, hey, this is how we do that. Now, the next part is how we can encrypt the password. So encryption of the password, we have installed the library, but we haven't actually uh, called the library. So I'll just say just above the express or even after the express doesn't really matter. We'll say, hey, I want to encrypt the things. So I'll just say, hey, we call this as bcrypt and the bcrypt is going to come up from require and bcrypt.js. So now I have access to this bcrypt and I can quickly go ahead and look that, hey, how bcrypt works, maybe I don't know. So bcrypt.js and this is how I can use bcrypt.js. Uh, first of all, I have to configure. I don't think we need a configuration. Here is a user syntax. So you have to provide a salt and a hash value. And then you have to first require the bcrypt. We have done that. Then you have to provide a salt value. Uh, the default is actually the 10, but there could be more. And then there are a couple of methods that how you can actually compare this uh, and to check the password, to hash a password. Probably this is the one that we uh, require. And again, there are a lot of methods how you can do that. I'll show you a really easy way that how you can actually do that. So what we want to use is auto generate a salt and hash. I think that is the one that we want to use. So bcrypt.hash is what we want to use. Then you can provide whatever the password is. And then you can provide the number of rounds you want to go for it. And uh, probably that's it. We can actually have a callback function in case there is some error, uh, but we'll just go with that. So that's nice. Okay, let's see how we can encrypt that. And here is the encrypt password. So we are receiving from the user this password. Let's go ahead and encrypt this one. So we'll call this one as a new variable. But first, this bcrypt uh, is not an easy thing. It's a cryptographic uh, algorithm that runs through and maybe your server is not that heavy and it just doesn't generate it automatically. So writing an await is always a good idea. So let's go ahead and use bcrypt. And again, the popular method of uh, hashing the password. So hash, and if you just go ahead and look for it, notice it says, give me a string, give me a salt, and I'll just encrypt this one, uh, salt, which is a string and the number of time. And again, this is an optional notice here, the R, so you can go ahead and skip this one. So I'll just say, hey, take the password that was given to me by the user and rotate it for the number of uh, 10 number of rounds. Uh, so that is what we are gonna be doing. Let's hold this into a variable. So we'll just say a hash password or we'll call this one as my encrypted password, password, and there we go. So we have this await and everything nicely going on. So this is done. We have encrypted the password. Told you, it's not that much of a difficult. Now it's time that we save the user in the database. All right, let's go ahead and how we can save the user. So again, this is a database operation. Don't forget to put await. Why? Because it's in another continent. All right, so we'll just say user. All right. And we want to just create. So there's a simple method that how we can create the user. There we go. And you have to pass on an object with all the details because it's a user. So model expects what all the fields you give it. This time it is referencing to the model that you are creating. So we'll just go ahead and say, first thing that we want to go ahead is first, my field is first name, which is mentioned in the model. And I want to add a data of first name here. Now, always remember this first name is something that I'm extracting from the request.body. But according to the new syntax of JavaScript, JavaScript is smart enough that it can automatically look for that the names are same, so I can just go ahead and work on with that. Uh, similarly, we'll just go ahead and say last name, and we can use the shorthand method. Email is also there, and we have this password. Now, if we go ahead and say this as password, did I mistyped it? I'll just select it and see if I have mistyped it somewhere. Nope. All right, so if you go ahead and do this password, it will automatically take this password. So all of our effort of encrypting this password will go in vain. We don't want to do that. And that's why we'll be saying, hey, take the password reference from my encrypted password. So this value is now getting used. Great. All right, but this doesn't actually, uh, this actually creates the values in the database. So we will hold this into a variable. So we'll just say const user, there we go. Feel free to call it anything. Now, whatever is saved in the database and whatever the response we have got, we are storing that into a user variable. Uh, so that is it. Uh, but we want to also generate a token for the user and send it. Now, one thing you might be remembering that we are not storing this token into this database. Uh, we have to reverse the order. So in this case, we actually have to generate a token and all of that. But I'll show you a better way to uh, discuss with that later on. But right now, remember, we are not storing that token into the database. So that is one thing you have to be cautious about. Now, let's go ahead and generate a token and I'll show you some of the details about the token generation as well. All right. 
So I want to generate a token. Now, in order to generate a token, we have already installed a package uh, known as JSON Web Token, but I have no idea how this package actually works. So I'll just go up here and look for the documentation. So JSON Web Token, did I wrote it correct? Nope. JWT should be a clear one. Uh, nope, I have to write it correctly. JSON Web Token, hope. Okay, so this is how it goes on and let's search for it, JSON Web Token. The usage is really simple and there is an example. So you have to say that, hey, first require the JSON Web Token. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. That should be the easiest of all. Uh, come up here and instead of calling it as JSON Web Token, let's call it as short as JSON Web Token, JWT. And again, the require will come up here just like this and we'll be saying that, hey, let's go for a JSON Web Token. All right, what are the next steps? The next step is that in order to create a token, you have to use jwt.sign and provide whatever the values are and then provide this SHHH. This is a secret that you have to provide. The ideal situation is use the secret uh, from the environment variable so you don't have to refer it again and again. We can go ahead and do that. Now for this, let's go up into code space, actually into this, I have to reload this, so I'll do that a little bit later on so we can go ahead and work on with that. And that's basically it. That's all it takes to actually generate a token. So let me provide you. And by the way, in case you got confused with what this is, this is actually your payload, means all the information that you want to encrypt into this payload and token, you can just put as much information as you like. Let's go ahead and try this out. Again, code is really simple for that, generating the token. So what I'll say that, hey, let's generate a token. So for that, jwt.sign is the method. There we go. Then you provide your payload. Notice nicely it says payload and, and in the string format and then provide a buffer or a secret key, jwt sign in option. So there is a lot that you can do. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just hit an enter so that everything is in a separate line and easily understandable. First is payload. Now payload, what I'll say that, hey, I want to extract a user ID. So I can go ahead and call this one as ID. Uh, in the token, or I can go ahead and call this one as user dot underscore ID, whatever you like to call it, just call it that. I'll just say, hey, let's call it as ID in the payload, that's it. And we'll be saying that, hey, I'll say user dot underscore ID. Now from where this is coming up. Now remember this, that we actually stored the user which cr got created in the database. Now this user in the MongoDB has a lot of field. Of course, the field that you have mentioned will be there, but MongoDB in addition, adds a property of underscore ID that is uniquely identifiable for every single entry that you make in the database. So this is what the payload is. But in case you want to add more field, you can go ahead and add it. For example, maybe uh, you want to add an email. So we can go ahead and refer, say, email. Now this email, you can bring it up from user.email. That was always a good idea. But since we are doing all of this stuff, then we can actually refer to this email directly, which is given by the user. So again, depends on what you really want to do and which one you think is the best practice. My goal is to make sure that you understand every single line of code of what we are doing, how we are doing it. Then you have to provide a secret. So just put up a comma and provide a secret. Remember, it was saying SSH, uh, which is a bad string. So we should be properly giving up a better string, uh, probably uh, something like from process.env.secret or something. So let's go ahead and put up a comment here for you that, hey, we should be actually using something like process.env. Uh, dot uh, jwt secret something like that so maybe you get a reference of how this is being done all right so once this is being done then we can go ahead and say that hey uh, maybe you want to add more additional fields so yes you can go ahead and add one more field if you press control space this will give you that hey what all i can add maybe encoding uh, expires in headers issuer there's a lot that you can do up here I'll just say, hey, add me expires in, and maybe I want to expire my token within uh, two hours. This is the syntax you can refer. So this is how you actually create your token. That's all you do. Let's store this token into a variable. So we're gonna go ahead and say const token. There we go. Told you, really simple. Okay, uh, oops. Okay, so there we go. So now we have got this token stored. Now, how to actually go ahead and keep this token? So what I'm going to do is I have access to this user, which was given to me, but this user has a schema, means it has a model that I've created. And in that model, I have got this token, which I created. It's not coming up from the database. So I'm appending that and I'm storing this token value, which I just generated there. All right. Okay. Also, what I want to do is 
I want to send this entire user object to the front end. Yes, of course, all information, first name, last name, email, password, and the token which I just added into this big, large user object. But one thing I realized, I don't want to send this password because although it is encrypted, still don't want to send it to the user, it looks weird. So whenever you don't want to send any field, you can go ahead and refer to that field, for example, password, uh, first name, last name, I don't know why is it suggesting me, maybe I have 100% made a typo somewhere, that's why it's referencing me. Yeah, there we go, Got, gotcha. So a password, that's why it was referencing me again and again, have to fix this typo. So password, and we can make it undefined. So as I was saying, got distracted, that if any field you don't want to send on the front end, you can actually set it undefined. It will not set it undefined in the database. It is just an object that you are storing here into this file and you can make any property of that object as undefined. It will not send it onto the user. So that's the basic of it. All right, a lot of work that we have done. Now it's time to go ahead and send this entire response onto the front end. All right, so how we can do that? It's simply res.status. So let's go ahead and have the status. Yes, I know this is bothering you. There we go. So we'll say that, hey, everything was great. So 201 or 200 means everything got correct. So this is the status and we don't want to just send a data. We want to send a JSON response. In the JSON response, you can go ahead and add a JSON object, whatever the data you want to send up. I just want to send this user. Now, additionally, maybe you want to send the token exclusively also, then just go ahead and send the token as an object. Uh, so whatever you want to send, you can go ahead and send this one. So this is the basics of how you actually go ahead and run your code in the back end step by step. Remember, it was not complex, lengthy, yes, but not complex. And we just wrote a structure code that what you really want to do and we just proceeded on that. Now here comes the debate that yes, maybe this is not a great approach. Maybe we don't want to send the token. Maybe we don't want to send the user. Maybe we want to store the token into the database also for further reference. Yes, you can go ahead and do that now, whatever makes sense to you. My goal was first to introduce you to the basics of how these backend infrastructures are being written and at least an auth system. I think we have successfully done this one. All right, let me show you one more approach because now I think you understand a lot of it and I think if I can give you an additional plan, you can go ahead and work on with that. So I'll just say, hey, this is my register. Similarly, we can go ahead and say app.post and let's go ahead and have a simple login route this time. All right, same steps, repeatable that our database is in another continent, so have an async, we get a request, and we get a response, we send a response, but we need a response object for that. And now let's go ahead and figure out. So first of all, I want to uh, collect all the users, so this will be a database operation, so again, try catch is a good idea. We don't want to log into the error much, so we'll just say, hey, uh, let's just go ahead and log the error. Maybe you want to log the error messages, maybe some custom response, you can go ahead and do that. Or maybe we'll build some really complex uh, Mern application in case you have enough requests, let me know. And we can go ahead and do that. So what is the action plan? Uh, really simple, get all uh, data from user or from front end or from body or whatever you like to go ahead and do that. Uh, once this is being done, then find the user in the database. So find user in DB, DB. Okay, uh, if that is all done, then uh, match his password, obviously. So otherwise he might be sending the wrong password. So match the password. So password in our database is actually encrypted. So whatever the user is sending it, we have to encrypt it. And thanks to JWT, not JWT, the Bcrypt JS, it will again be same encrypted because we will be using the same secret. So then we have to compare the string. So whatever user send, we encrypt it. Our database already hold the encrypted one, we compare them, pretty simple. And once this is being done, then uh, we can go ahead and match the password. If it matches, then just uh, send a token. Yeah, that sounds great, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. This should be all super easy now and we can glide through all the values. Okay, get all the data from users. So we know that request.body holds all of it, body holds of it. And we'll be saying, hey, const, this is a big object. And there we go. Uh, this time we expect that email and password will only come because it's a login route. So that's that was super easy. Now, we forgot to add a validation. Come on. We forgot to add a validation. So we want to check whether both the fields are there. So let's go ahead and add a validation. 
uh, check. Right now we want to use the same validation check uh, just we use in the register form. You can make it more complex. So we'll check that if user or, you want to go with or? Ha, ah, nice catch. And we want to go for user, not user, email, my bad, sorry. Email and we also want to have a password. Come on, don't want to write it here. Password. And we want to check both of them should be there. So let's go ahead and work on with that. So same logic, wrap it up and say if both of them are not present, then we want to send a response. So we'll just send a response, something like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and say res.status. And we will say that, hey, this is going to be a 400 if nothing was found. So we'll just say fields are missing or something like that. You can send a JSON response for consistency, but you now know it and you can perform better there. So we'll say uh, email, send all fields, send all data. I know that's a bad message, but you can go ahead and write better message than this. Uh, once this is all done, that means I can find a user in the database. Definitely want to use the same, uh, this user for that, for making this query. So all we gotta do is, of course, this is a database query, don't forget that. We'll say user.find1. Uh, we can actually use this find1 pretty easy and we'll be finding it based on email. So let's go ahead and say that, hey, you take this email and if somebody is gonna be getting find out, so we can go ahead and say const user that will be equal to await now what if the user doesn't exist i'll give this as an assignment to you uh, if user is not there then what so go ahead and write a code for this one i'll assume that the user exists so again a small assignment for you so just go ahead and use that so assignment there we go you just check out a condition that if the user is not there, then I don't want to proceed. So go ahead and check that. That's a nice assignment. Now, coming up onto the part is how we are going to match the password. Now, matching the password is actually super, super easy. You can use await syntax here. Obviously, Bcrypt takes time. So we're going to go ahead and say, hey, Bcrypt, now you want to compare. And there is a super easy way. Bcrypt actually gives you the way of how you can actually compare the password. First is for mode is you have to provide the string and then you have to provide the hash value. So I have to do nothing. It basically literally asks you that give me the string and the hash and I'll compare it for you and I'll give it to it. The password that comes from the user side. And since I've queried the database already, I have this access to user which will dump me all the database from that is coming up from the uh, database side. And I'll say, hey, there's a password. Since we are storing the hash password, these are the, all the two things that it required. And uh, it will just do the comparison for me. So that is super, super easy. Now, the only problem is uh, that we want to make sure that the user exists and the password is also correct. Now, although in case you have done the assignment and checked it, then obviously you can proceed further and hold the result the true or false, this actually gives you a Boolean value, you can go ahead and store this and proceed further. That's a one flow of how you can do this. In case you want to do a hacky flow, not a hacky flow, it's a developer flow, everybody uses it. You'll find it in a ton of databases and GitHub repository where people publish these kinds of code. So we'll just uh, cut this out and we'll match with another condition. Again, if you don't want to use this condition, totally up to you. I'll say if the user exists, that means, and the password is correct. So I'll just use an person, and then we'll use this one. So again, really, really simple, nothing to be worried about. I'll just use a parenthesis. Now, if the parenthesis is true, so it will work. If it is false, it will not work. So I'll just paste this one. So this entire thing actually gives me a true or false, a Boolean value. You can read that in the documentation. And this also needs to be there. So if user is present, that means database has given me some result, not the undefined or null or something, then I'll go and jump into this match password. So this is doing two things at once. Again, if you don't like this flow, go one by one, if and else, there is nothing wrong in that part as well. If this is all good, I want to generate a token. And I know already JWT can actually help me with that. Hey, JWT, just use a sign method to get me a token. What are the payloads you want to give it to it? So let's hit enter. And the first payload that I want to give is, hey, let's just provide an ID. ID, it will grab from user dot underscore ID. Remember, if I'm coming here, that means 100% user is there. So I'm not worried on that part. Then obviously I have to provide uh, other things like what is my secret? So again, we actually have to grab the secret from here. 
And again, it would be better if I just add this line up here. In fact, I can just copy all of this. <laughs> okay. I have to go ahead and provide a better uh, process.env JWT secret. That would be better. In fact, if I can caps this up, that would be better. But you get the idea that why I'm actually giving it. I can actually go ahead and use a better approach on this one. All right. So now, once I've done this JWT.sign, let's store that into a variable. Let's call this one as token. There we go. Now, if I'm reaching at this point, that means I have access to this token. So let's append this because remember, we have access to this user, but this user has uh, encrypted password and token field is not there because it, we didn't store that into database. So we'll say that user.token will get the value from token. And also, I don't want to set the password still. So what I have to do, really simple, user.password undefined. There we go. Now, if this is all done, now comes the important part is uh, send token in user cookie. This is where our cookie parser actually comes into the picture. So cookie parser is a nice, really nice parser. Uh, what you can do is you can just install this and after that you have to just require that. So let's do it one by one. And I'll say, hey, I want to have a simple uh, cookie parser access. So I'll just say const and let's call this one as cookie parser or all lowercase would be good, uppercase. All right, so cookie parser, and we'll be saying require, and we'll be saying, oops, cookie parser, yeah, that one. Now, once you have this cookie parser, you obviously 100% have to come up here. It's mentioned in the documentation that these are actually middleware. So you have to write this line so that whatever the user cookies are, I can have an access. So remember, I told you in the middleware section that the middlewares are nothing. It's just something which happens in between. So whenever a request is coming up, the request might be in the JSON format. That's why we use app.use so that right in between our app is able to keep on, is able to understand the JSON format. Similar to this, now we have the access that now our application should be able to understand cookies, not only understand, but able to interact with them. That's why the cookie parser exists. Once you have this one here, now I have here on this line, have an access that I can go ahead and interact with anybody's cookies. Now, in order to create the cookies, if I go up here, uh, it's not really difficult to have your cookies. Notice here, you can have a request.cookies. I highly recommend that. Try out, dump it out, request.cookies, and you can actually work on with that. In order to create the cookies, they actually mentioned that, that, hey, how to create the cookies and all secrets and all of that. They are nicely mentioning it up here, the secrets and options and all that. So option is an object that is passed to cookie parser as a second option, and you can read more for it. And you have to provide values up here. Let me show you. The code is actually super easy. So how we craft the cookies is, first of all, this is actually the section where we are working on uh, cookie section. Cookie, cookie, section. Ha, cookie section. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So first of all, we have to create an option. Now you can create it within inside that, but it's actually much more easier and much more readable here. So let's go ahead and create an options, option, whatever you like. It's just an object. There is nothing more. It's just an object. So first of all, we have to provide that when is the cookie expiring? So we can go ahead and say, hey, uh, cookie, go ahead and say expires. It will not suggest you anything because these are options uh, directly for the cookies. So make sure you are cautious on that. So we'll say that, hey, when is going to expires? So for that, we have to provide the date. Uh, we'll say, hey, new and date. So this will use an option of date dot now. So this will give me a date of exactly uh, for today. Now the syntax of how we add this, here's a nice secret for that. How many days you want the cookies to go for? Three days, all right. Then you have to convert that into the lowest unit. So uh, we'll say that, hey, there are 24 days, 24 hours, not days, 24 hours in a day. So multiply it with that, then go ahead and multiply it with 60. So we boiled it down to minutes and then we boiled it down to seconds. So go ahead and do that and then go ahead and make it a milliseconds. So go ahead and multiply it with thousand. So now this is the syntax that how you go ahead and do that. Maybe you want to keep it for one millisecond, then go ahead and say thousand, that's it. If you want to keep it alive for maybe uh, a minute, so just go ahead and multiply it with 60. So this is minute, this is hours, this is uh, so seconds and minutes, and then hours and then number of days. Really simple syntax. I hope you will not forget it <laughs> from now. All right, so this is the first option that we go ahead and provide it. Once this is all done, then provide a comma. 
uh, one important factor that we want to give is HTTP only. This makes your cookie secure. Uh, not really secure, the cookies are not encrypted, but only server can actually manipulate this if this flag is on. User cannot manipulate these cookies by going into the browser, right-clicking and all of that. So they only can manipulate, this cookies can be manipulated via the browser only. So good options to have. Uh, maybe we can have a long discussion on this one later on. All right, now let's go ahead and send this one. So res.status, everything looks good in this case. So we're gonna go ahead and say 200. And then we'll say, hey, this time, just like we have all these functions, we have access to this cookie as well, thanks to the cookie parser. So we want to send that, hey, what do you want to send in the cookies? First of all, I want to send a cookie on token. The name of the cookie is going to be token. The value that is going to take is going to be token. All right. Now, once this is all done, then we want to send this option, options. So all these options are being sent. And once this is all done, then I want to send a JSON response. Yes, you can still trail down the JSON option. What all the data you want to send through the JSON, uh, usually in the production grade, you will see something like this. So there is something like success, always something like this is true or false or whatever the response is coming up. And uh, maybe you want to send the token as well. Oops. Maybe you want to send the token as well. Maybe somebody is making a mobile app. He doesn't have access to this cookies. So in that case, sending the token so that front end developer or mobile developer know what to do further. Maybe you want to send the user entirely as an object. Maybe you want to do something with that. Or maybe in just one call, you want to send more data. Really, it depends on what you really want to do. You can actually go ahead and do that. So this is all. And by the way, did I wrote it into wrong section? Yes, I wrote everything into my register section. Really bad. Uh, should be making a cut out of it. And this was generating a token. This was a cookie section. So let's go ahead and grab this out. Cut this out. My bad. Happens to every developer. And we'll go into login section. And we have generated the token. Token was generated. Now let's send it up into the cookie. Actually, this is, yep, send the token in the cookie. So let's go ahead and paste it up here. So yes, this is cookie section. We are creating uh, options and sending it up. So should be all good if we haven't made any error or something like that. All right, so this should look good and we should be able to get the data and everything, all of that nicely. All right, so this looks good as of now, but we still need to test our code. At least let's see if our code actually runs or not in this case. Uh, so let's go ahead and say npm start to actually see if we have made any typos or something or database is getting connected or not. Yeah, at least it is running. So uh, don't want to open it browser because if you open it up in the browser, uh, this is how it looks like as of now. Come on, open it up. And we have a long list of how this is being built and done. All right, so there we go. So this is our app that is working as of now. So let's go ahead and copy this. Now we can make some queries from the Thunder clients, everything in the browser. Love it that everything is happening in the browser. Make a new request. And there we go. We want to make a request to this URL. Paste it up, a really long one. And we want to send a request to register. And we want to send some data in the body. So JSON data. And we'll be sending just first name. First name. And that first name is going to be, uh, let's just say Hitesh. And let's see a post request and see what happens because we have created a post route. Send this. And it says 404, 405 method not allowed. So looks like a register method is, let's see what all response we are getting. Get, and we want to send a post data. Yeah, that should be, and headers should be all good. Uh, definitely need a little bit of more testing to be done that how this all JSON content we need to send, or probably we need to use a postman. So definitely let me do some debugging onto this one that, hey, why we are not getting response here? Again, codes uh, sandbox these code spaces is a little bit new, so I need to check this out. But at least we have actually understood what the code we have written here. Uh, definitely we can debug it, so no worries on that part. So let me catch you up in the next video and uh, let me figure out what is going on all and let's try some requests through the postman as well. Let's catch up in the next video.